Welcome everyone to a new episode of our program where we introduce you to a platform of women with their great achievements and their journey when it comes into that. With that, we're going to head to our first introduction to know more about our guests and then we'll be back. Packaging materials and stayed six years to discover that she would not live a fulfilling life without challenging herself first. Sana assumed the following positions. From 2009 to 2014, Deputy Managing Director of KPAC. From 2014 to 2016, Executive Vice President of the Kuwait Packaging Materials Company, KPAC. From January 2016, the CEO of Omnia Project Management Company, one of its founders to the present time. And we're back, dear viewers, to welcome our dearest guest with us. Uh, we would like to welcome um, Sana Agumlas. We're really happy to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Of course, when it comes into introducing you to the audience, I'm very sure and familiar that everyone knows you through a project called Omnia. But of course, we want to introduce you again to the audience to know more about you, starting from the beginning, uh, Sana, talking about you uh, and your dreams. From where did you, let's say, all this start from? Well, actually, this is, didn't start from the beginning because in the beginning I was uh, into movies and film directing and this is where I got my degree in uh, film directing from the States. But when I came yeah. back here, I found that was an uh, earlier time and that was a bit of difficult for women to actually penetrate that uh, community and be uh, productive in that field. So I decided to work alone and uh, I've been working as a freelancer and in, an, in a small company, or company, not KTV, uh, for some time. But then I decided that uh, life has more to do. Uh, so I was interested in the industry and in uh, plastic waste in specific. That's where Omnia came in. Uh, Omnia is a project started by three people, uh, two women, by the way and uh, it's uh, to collect and segregate the plastic waste to recycle it especially PET which is the water bottles uh, which at that time we're talking about uh, 2015 uh, there was no, no such a familiar uh, or similar factory in the region and it was very uh, unique and um, ahead of its time actually. So we started with the collection system and then we, we actually did build and operate the factory and we produce uh, recycled PET plastic and uh, we had been exporting all our product to Europe because it was a high quality. But with, co with COVID and what came with it, we had to shut down the, the, uh, um, the factory for financial reasons, uh, mainly because there is no enough material, because mm -hmm. there is no segregation system in mm -hmm. the country. Uh, we had some loss. Uh, I'm not going to say that I was sorry about it, because it's not a failure, actually. It was a step ahead uh, to learn more and to concentrate on the, on the collection system, which is we doing now. Uh, and the collection is the first step uh, to any recycling industry in any place in the world. So um, I always say thank God that you directed us to the right place at the right time. Yes, and to be honest, um, uh, talking about this program, though it had, let's say, some ups and downs uh, within the journey itself, but it is actually an enlightenment not only uh, for you, but even for everyone who uh, been associated with such program. Because uh, talking about our country, though it is a small, but we really do lack, and um, maybe even the idea of having something to recycle, or even the idea of actually introducing recycle in the family and society, could be uh, so far is still growing. So to have that step. Uh, going on and presenting it to the audience would actually uh, I'm very sure triggers so many to come and to of course even uh, in the future could let's say uh, direct with you in, in, in order to maybe recreate that again but 
Talking about, let's say, uh, back when you were talking about your uh, specialization and how it's associated to uh, the audience and educating them, like, didn't you feel it's somehow connected that it is more easy for you to uh, take your career and try to, let's say, create some kind of, let's say, footage, images, um, movies that could actually uh, educate learners more about it? That's a very inter interesting question, and uh, you're making me thinking about, uh, about a lot of things. Actually, yeah. it's not on top of my head, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, the reason that I went to film directing in the, in the beginning was to make a change, mm -hmm. to communicate with the people and tell them that there is there should be a change to the better future, whichever or however, or in any kind of field that you want. But the change is eminent and we have to do it because we need to develop as a yeah. community as a country and all that when i was trying to do that in, in in that stage of my life and i was trying to use uh, cinema or production to actually communicate with people and send the message that i wanted to send i found out that it's it wasn't the right way or the right time at that time but now uh, i think it's not what i learned that make me communicate easily with the people. It's the passion about what I do, it's the sincerity, and it's, that, and it's the transparency that if you say something, I found out that if you say something directly from, from your heart, it will get to anybody's heart. So it's the sincerity and, and devotion to this project that made me able to communicate with anyone. Yes, and it is really great to hear uh, such words coming from you and especially with the journey that you had and even the purpose that you actually uh, kept it on top which is even presenting to the audience more about and learning more about how important it is to uh, keep our environment safe and uh, to even urge uh, everyone to start on recycling and even collecting uh, such kind of let's say materials and bottles and plastic. I myself have been associated with uh, Umia and even been working with even let's say uh, learners volunteers and so on tell us about let's say this kind of feeling by exploring yourself to the audience educating them seeing that there is actually some kind of response though let's say uh, to my perspective it is kind of let's say a small uh, uh, people who let's say started to uh, feel more uh, aware about it but comparing it with let's say none is better than having let's say no one to respond yes uh, it's always better to have more people convinced, but uh, let me just bring to your attention and everybody else's attention. I'm not here to teach people how to behave. This behavior embedded in them. Yeah. Uh, this behavior, they're practicing it when they travel abroad. So I'm not here to teach anybody anything because I'm not better than anyone. Uh, they are all know what they, it needs to be done. But what actually makes them motivated is that they see us, me and Farah, my partner, two ladies, not young, and collecting the plastic ourselves from home, house to house, that makes them feel, uh, how can I say, ashamed a bit or guilty towards mm -hmm. the, our home country and, uh, and our environment. And if you talk to them more about the future of their kids and their grandkids and yeah. all these people, they would think twice and three times and they will think yes we're going to the to a dead end in the environmental and waste management issues and nobody literally nobody is paying attention to that uh, people are good inside we bet on people from the first place from the first day we work and our bet was right because who's helping us now is people. Mm -hmm. We're doing it with the people, for the people, and by the people. Yes. Uh, because we do believe in this country. We do believe in uh, this, uh, let's say, group of people that living in this country. Mm -hmm. And we do believe that we have to facilitate a better, much better, cleaner environment for the future of our younger generation. And by the way, the younger generation is fantastic. I mean, they're more uh, happy and active and segregate and they just want to do it yeah. because they believe in it. Uh, so people are good in nature. 
and uh, we believe in that and we're, we're working with them on that yes and it's really great to hear about that indeed dealing with your specialty with the film uh, industry and so on of course it had so many changes so many developments even when it comes into i've seen with my friends especially the ones that are really interested in uh, uh, cinema industry is that even when it comes into the uh, cameras there are some kind of let's say uh, great additions that happens filters within the camera itself so from that perspective how do you let's say evaluate the things uh, and, and the movies that comes like do you actually sit and criticize like they should have done it from this way and so on like with the family and friends but, uh, the thing is that the being there and doing that and knowing everything all the details makes you very aware of all details so I, I like when I see a movie that I don't see a, a mistake that makes me cut out of it uh -huh. so immediately my eyes catch it and I feel I'm not I'm out of it. Oh, okay, that's, that's really, a, that's something. That's, that's, yeah. that's a major problem. That was uh, before uh, I had, uh, I was, I mean, I work in two places or, or in different places. Film, like in real film, yeah. cinema, industry. And I worked with video. Uh, one of the <laughs> issues with videos is the missing frame. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, There because is. you love what you do, that's why you get to notice. Yeah, but okay. but um, I'm very happy about what's going on now. Uh, very proud of the Kuwaiti women in general, ladies, that are going into that field, doing a great production. Uh, the advantage, if I may say, for you in this age, is that you have smaller cameras, you have smaller uh, equipment to work with and that facilitates a better movement and uh, creation and you don't have a big budget of mm -hmm. production mm -hmm. so good for you yeah so this is the kind of let's say uh, updates that's been happening recently but uh, there's kind of let's say um, um, a contribution on that is that uh, sticking to heavy things with heavy materials would actually uh, create a better let's say vision better creation is that really true especially now that we see the smaller the equipment it looks like uh, people will see and feel that it's not going to be that professional like is it true uh, it, it's no no I'm not going to say it's not professional uh -huh. everybody is professional in his or her work yes. but But the difference is that uh, when you, we used to work with cinema, we used to carry the camera like mm -hmm. a baby because it's a big camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. Second, you used to work with the roll of film. Yeah. So at that time, we used to feel mm -hmm. and touch the thing that we are doing. Now it's all done with a small camera and yeah. on the computer. Uh, before, we had very hard time to create any effect. But now with the digital uh, filming and, with and just button, uh, editing, <laughs> it's just a button, as yeah. you said. Uh, maybe, maybe, huh? uh, this will give all the people who are working in this field maybe a better window of creation mm -hmm. and uh, be have a wild imaginary and create something different or new yes well thank you very much for your time we really had thank pleasure you. having you here with us and it was let's say one of the interesting interviews you had thank, thank you, you very so much, much. and dear viewers we're going to continue more on episodes so stay tuned with us <laughs>